Route 66. One of the very first national highways for motor vehicles in the US. Route 66 is synonymous with the great all-American road trip, and that's exactly what this video is all about. We're driving the mother road from west to east, but in order to start our journey, we have to head south from Oregon in order to get home. Let's go. We're sad because we have to leave this amazing house here on the Oregon coast. That's okay. We're going on a road trip. Let's go. We've been overlanding on and off for like the last four and a half years. And we've always said, we're going to save California because we want to spend a lot of time in California. And now that we finally decided, like, let's spend a week in California, which isn't that long, they're having like record breaking rain and snow. It snowed on the Hollywood sign last night. Kirk, thank you. We're getting right to that wild winter storm that's bringing levels of rain and snow. Southern California hasn't seen in decades. Wild. And look, if you look up at the Hollywood sign, you can see it's kind of hard to see sometimes. We it is unknown how long the closure will last. It could be several hours, not stop snowing for several hours. This is a Everything's closed. I-5 heading into L.A. completely closed. So if you've been watching our past videos, you know that we were in Bandon Beach, Oregon. We had beautiful weather up there, but then that all changed and this big storm front came through. So we decided to head south because this little Nissan is not gonna get up mountains. It's nuts actually, I feel really dumb, but we're trying to get home. And if we go south, our chances of getting across the mountains are way better because we can't get across the other side of the mountains any further north, keep hearing like, just go as far south as possible. So we are gonna go as far south as we can. We're hoping to get on like, Route 66 and go over like paralleling 15 over the mountains towards like Lake Havasu. But we may even have to go farther south than that and cross in like Palm Springs area. We're not really sure. It is raining like crazy, but I feel like we can't complain about rain because this area of the country needs it so desperately. Why did it have to be this week? <laughs> oh well. I'm thinking of the Beach Boys and everything else, and this is not at all what I'm expecting. I was always told that Santa Barbara was paradise. Like, oh, it's sunny every day of the year. It's sunny and 70 every day. Y'all lie. It's not. California. 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 So far today, we've had hail, rain. We've seen snow, sun, rock slides. It's a busy day. Only one cup of coffee down, too. <sighs> journey starts here. Santa Monica Pier. So, <laughs> doesn't get too more touristy than that. No. But it's classic. Route 66 is classic. I'm excited. So typically people end the route here. That's why it says the end of Route 66. But this is where we start because we're trailblazers. We like to do things differently here. Why not? We have to make it a long ways today because there's really, we have to be home by a certain time. Like next weekend. So we got to make time on this trail. So today we're going to try to make it to Flagstaff. That's the goal. We've got a lot to see. So let's go. 2,448 miles is how long Route 66 is across the U.S. Santa Monica to Chicago or vice versa. The rain just started again. So hopefully we're not driving with this storm the entire way across the country. <laughs> So our first official stop on Route 66 is McDonald's. We actually don't eat McDonald's that often. You may not guess that by looking at us, but we really don't. <laughs> this road trip is already feeling very American. So this is the oldest McDonald's still standing, and they've turned it into a museum. So you can go there and learn about the history or watch the founder, whatever you want to do. But this McDonald's, it's a McDonald's, except it's really old. We got our food. The food here is the same. We hopped back in the car because it was really cold. This is a normal McDonald's, except that it's really old. I mean, their food looks the same. But they do have a museum here, 
And if that's a very generous term. <laughs> if if you're really into McDonald's history, I mean, you can stop here. This place is for you. All right, we're gonna get back on the road. Let's go. So we knew when we started that we weren't going to be able to make it over the pass into Arizona following Route 66 because of weather. It's closed, it's not safe, so we're going to have to dip down south closer to Joshua Tree and then get back on. Morning from Phoenix, Arizona. No, Phoenix is not on Route 66. We had uh, to reroute again yesterday after we started filming because the roads were not passable. So we ended up detouring to Phoenix. Now we're driving to Flagstaff to hop back on Route 66 and then continue from there. There is some snow heading into Flagstaff on the south side of the city where we're coming from. We will see. It's a bummer because we were going to pass like the Mojave Desert. We were going to pass Lake Havasu, see London Bridge. There was a section like we love the desert. And we were kind of looking forward to that bit, but it just didn't happen. Like we're not gonna risk our safety for some content. But if you are planning a trip down Route 66, I'm gonna link my friend Amanda's content down below because she did drive this, I think last year, and she did the whole drive and she takes excellent notes. So I will link that there if you wanna check out her recommendations. four miles from Flagstaff and it just got a little dicey and by a little bit I don't know why I'm smiling because this isn't fun to me I hate this <laughs> the roads are down to one lane everybody's going about 40 miles an hour in a 75 zone I think we're done climbing we're just cruising into Flagstaff but it's gotten kind of nasty so we knew the last little bit heading in would be bad there were no signs for chain ups chains required anything like that I don't think we need chains on this, but it's just enough to kind of make you uncomfortable, especially when you're from the south and you don't drive in snow and you're in a tiny little car versus maybe something with four-wheel drive. Look how pretty it is. We don't get snow at home. We've been fascinated the whole trip, just snow. Hanging on for dear life. <laughs> What's the road? lunchtime so we needed to stop Flagstaff just got hit with a snowstorm Sarah and I have never been in anything like this before in our lives I mean we've seen snow but not this much of it at one time on a cold 27 degree wintry blizzard day here in Flagstaff I think the perfect thing is for some pasty place there's a dog sitting at the bar <laughs> got the pasty now the journey back was it out there? Brave the elements. All for pasty. I love pasty so much. Oh, it's warm. 
So this is from Cornish Pasty Co. So what a pasty is, I read that they're from Cornwall, which I didn't know that. So back in Cornwall, people would go down the mines, the 10 mines in England, and they would take their pasties because they're sort of like a warm pastry. And they usually are filled traditionally with beef, rutabaga, onion, and potatoes. So they're kind of like this little warm, savory pocket. I grew up eating pasty pretty regularly because a lot of people from Cornwall immigrated to the U.S., specifically to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan around the 20th century. They would do the same thing. They would take these little pies down into the copper mines and they would have a nice little warm lunch. They would make these little pastries. They'd stick them over their lanterns down the mines and then they'd have a warm lunch to eat. So I grew up eating these because I have a lot of family from the UP and it was just sort of carried on from the family who used to mine in the copper mines but they're so good look at that so you got the flaky dough and on the inside this is the original which is the the beef the rutabaga onion and then this place the cornish pastico um we got another one that's like a mexican one so i think it's got chilies and cheese and a couple other things we wanted to try too but that's what a pasty is. Connor and Alex of Axe Adventure actually recommended that we come here on this road trip. And I was so glad they told us there was one here because I could not have picked a better lunch for a cold and snowy day in Arizona. Imagine a really tasty, delicious Hot Pocket. That, that was really, Sarah, that was really good. It was very good, very filling. We ate it in the car at a gas station because we can't go in because of Kramer. Golly <laughs> dog. Petrified Forest National Park is a great stop for Route 66, but unfortunately, we can't film inside there. If you haven't seen our national park video, I would uh, highly recommend go watch that. But we did take some photos. Just a little bit off of Route 66 is Santa Fe, a town we've never been to. And we had a lot of people give all the recommendations for Santa Fe, and this is one of them. Leave it to us to find a good coffee shop here in Santa Fe. We've got our coffee, let's get back on the road. known about Cadillac Ranch for a while, but what I didn't know is that it's actually been around since the 70s. I figured this was just one of those millennial art installations, you know, they put some random art somewhere and all the millennials come running for the Instagram, but actually it's been around for a long time. So it's sort of a classic Route 66 stop and it's actually more popular than ever. So long story short, the guy who owns this land hired artists to come out here to Texas and to create something original for his property in this area of Texas. Like we're just outside of Amarillo. And what they came up with was these Cadillacs. Once people started vandalizing them, they were okay with it. And now they allow people to spray paint them. They actually sell spray paint right up there for $7.50. So if you want to spray paint one, you can. It smells so heavy of spray paint. Here's a tip. If uh, you don't want to pay $7.50 for spray paint, just go to the trash cans because people, this thing's full. Somebody paid, we get to use it for free. 
I think we could be the next Banksy. We'll let you know. Oh gosh, that's the wrong way. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get back on the road. Good morning from Oklahoma City. We started out this morning by visiting the Oklahoma City National Memorial. Maybe you're like me, you don't really remember the bombing. I was three when it happened, so I don't have any memory of it. So truthfully, like the first time I came through Oklahoma City several years ago, I learned a lot about it. And I learned that 19 of the 168 people who died were kids even. So, but they did a really nice job with the memorial. It's really beautiful. You can see this tree out here, this elm tree that survived. It's not. I thought they planted it in memory, but it actually survived the bombing next to the building. So they've now they're viewing it as representation of it survived this and it's grown and it's hope. So I don't know, it's kind of cool. But it's a really beautiful memorial, very simple but very well done. Oklahoma is actually home to most of the original Route 66. So you can drive a lot of the road while you're here in the state. And you see all the diners, you see all the different like kind of retro tourist kind of traps that they want you to stop at. And the whole tourist thing is not really our jam, but that doesn't mean that there's not importance to it. These people have opened up these businesses because they want you to stop, they want you to help out the community. But just because Route 66 isn't really our jam doesn't mean that it's not important or it didn't play a vital part in the American like tourist industry. And I ain't gonna waste it Honey tripping romance And the hours have faded This world keeps coming round and round So there ain't no use feeling down <laughs> This is one thing I have always wanted to stop at. I see it on Instagram, I've seen the posts but it's a blue well right here in Oklahoma. So this is the blue well of Catoosa, Oklahoma. It used to be a swimming park. It was built for his wife back in the 1970s. You used to be able to swim and it looks like that was maybe a slide or you could play inside of it. There's ladders going into it. And then in the 80s, they closed it down, 1988. But then they restored it and now it's owned by the city. So that's the history of the Blue Well. It's really funny because you see these things online and I really, really thought, kind of like Cadillac Ranch, that it, they were just these random stops in the middle of nowhere to get tourists out there, you know, get the Instagrammers and that kind of thing. Like, you know, stuff that's kind of crazy online. Like you think of like Martha Texas, the, Texas, the Prada store, the Target store. Like those, yes, it's art, but it definitely drew people out to this middle of nowhere place. And I kind of assume that's what this stuff was too, but no, it's been here for years. And I guess we're all just now picking up on it. I know all of our parents and grandparents are like, oh, I knew that was there. I already knew that was in Catoosa, Oklahoma. So we're a day late and a dollar short. Funny enough, you can catch and release fish here. So. But no swimming today. You're not allowed to swim here anymore. Yeah, you can't swim. So even though it used to be a swimming hole, it's no longer a swimming hole. It's just a well. Call us Jonah. So now we're we're in the belly of the well. I feel like oh, it's got an upstairs. Yeah. <sighs> there's not much to there's not much to see. Well, well, well. <laughs> so the well has these little blowholes, and they used to be the slides that you could slide down into the water. I need to build one of these. This is what road trips are about. Finding things like this. Yeah, each of those are little slides. That's cute. So I guess you could jump off the top and then the little fins. Is that what they're called on a whale? Fins? I no. I call them a blowhole, but yeah. No, the blowhole's on top. But what are the fins? Are those fins? The arms? The whale's arms. Maybe they have arms because they're technically mammals and not fish. 
<laughs> Let me know, are they fins or are they arms? <laughs> anyway, they're slides. So I guess in the day you could jump off the top, slide down the arms. The biggest perk when you're driving on a long road trip is that they have bathrooms. There's no one here to attend the place, but there's bathrooms. Just save this another stop, so I'll be back. One thing that's surprising, all these people are passing this well and not one person has stopped. It's kind of blowing my mind right now. This deserves your attention. It does. I was raving about the fact that they had bathrooms, but weirdest bathroom I've seen in a long time, at least in the US. I'm gonna put a picture in here. <laughs> So you and your best friend can go holding hands, but they had separate ladies and men, which is weird. So you and a friend can have some really, I don't want to say intimate moments, but what's the right word? Things get real personal real fast in Oklahoma. One last stop for us on Route 66. So technically the route does end in Chicago, but from here we are going to fork off and go home. We love Chicago, but I think we'd like to go to Chicago and have more time to enjoy it. So for now, St. Louis is the end of our, our road. And right here on Route 66, this is recommended, Ted Drew's and it's frozen custard. Now I'd love to act surprised like I didn't know this here, but we've actually been here before and it's really good. It's right on Route 66. I think St. Louis is the perfect end to a Route 66 journey, or actually it'd be the perfect beginning. Yes, it does start in Chicago, and Chicago is amazing, but St. Louis is the gateway to the West. So if you're here, you can see the St. Louis Arch. We've seen it, it's great, you need to go. It's a national park, so we cannot film there. We'll put some pictures here. So St. Louis seems like the perfect place to end our adventure with some custard. Let's go. The place has been around since 1929, so it's been here for quite a while. Everybody, they're known for their concretes. You know, blizzards. No matter what type of ice cream we go to, whatever specialty shop, I always get cookies and cream. Sarah thinks I'm boring. I'm just sticking with what's good. This is a small. They had a mini, but we haven't eaten all day at all. So I committed to a small. Sugar crash in three, two, one. We've driven over 7,000 miles in this rental car. All right, <clears throat> before we close off this, Route 66 video. We did want to say, we asked you all for recommendations on Instagram and you all delivered. However, most of y'all delivered on some sort of restaurant or food, which was awesome. But if we had taken y'all up on every single place that you recommended, we'd still be eating somewhere around Arizona and we'd be a thousand pounds heavier by now. Cause most of the food on Route 66 is like diner kind of food. We just passed a really cute like drive-in donut place. and obviously custard. So thank you all for the recommendations. We saw and read them all and we try to take you guys up on as many of them as possible. Uh, we just <laughs> want to fit in our clothes. We just need to fit in our clothes. We did <laughs> prioritize custard because what you need after sitting on your butts for thousands of miles in three weeks is ice cream at the end. <laughs> all right. See y'all later. For behind the scenes and extra content, you can head on over to our Patreon community. Otherwise, be sure to follow on Instagram or like and subscribe here. It really helps creators like us.